Hi. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And this paper studies the coin problem with applications to data streams. Uh, I'm Sumega and this is joint work with Mark and David. So the coin problem we study is defined as follows. Given a stream of n identically and independently drawn uniformly random bits, that is each bit is one with probability half and uh, n minus one with probability half, then you a streaming algorithm needs to output the majority of these bits and it needs to be correct with high probability over the input distribution, which in this case is the uniform distribution. One of the uh, algorithms to do that would be you keep track of the count uh, that is the sum of these bits and this requires order, order log n space and in the end uh, seeing the count you see if it is greater than zero or less than zero to determine what is the majority of uh, of these bits and this algorithm that uses log n space would be correct on every uh, input uh, with probability one the question is can you do better in terms of space when you only need to be correct with high probability over the uniform distribution Uh, there are previous books that, that have studied the coin problem and the coin problem that these paper consider is as follows. The, they, they study different models, uh, computation models and, uh, and, and the hardness of uh, this problem with respect to those computational models. So the problem is as follows. You want to distinguish between n identically and independently drawn uniform coins versus n identically and independently drawn coins with where each coin has a bias of half plus F delta towards one that is each coin is one with probability half plus delta and minus one with probability half minus delta uh, observe that solving your majority on uniform distribution with a, a high enough advantage uh, suffices to solve the so suffices to distinguish between uh, these two uh, b between these two distributions for a certain delta which is theta one by theta of one by square root n and the best known lower bound uh, uh, for for distinguishing between these two distributions for streaming algorithms is omega log log one by delta which would be omega log log n for solving majority Uh, I want to mention another uh, another work in this uh, direction. Uh, in 1970, Hellman Cover proved a stronger lower bound of omega log one by delta on memory when the algorithm is time invariant. That is, any time invariant algorithm requires log one by delta memory to uh, to to distinguish between uh, uniform coins and coins with bias half plus delta towards one. Uh, what we want to prove lower bounds but we want to prove lower bounds for algorithms that knows the time step without the need to store it in memory that is we prove for even algorithms that uh, whose function whose function even algorithms that that are allowed to depend on time next i want to mention some of the related work on counting so when all xi's are one that is you just want to count n or like figure out what n is, then counting within a factor of two with high probability can be done in order log log n space. But when x i is a one plus minus one, we already know that counting within a constant factor of one plus epsilon requires omega log n space. Uh, counting and majority have have some relations. Ha, have counting on uniform distribution and majority in uniform distribution can be shown to be formally related. So then you will ask why doesn't this solve the problem that we are asking? It does not because the 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 the, the lower bound is is in is worst case over the input that is it shows that any streaming algorithm that is correct on every input but with high probability over the randomness used requires l omega log n space. But what we want is an average case lower bound over the uniform distribution that it is even hard to uh, uh, to it, it is it is hard uh, for a streaming algorithm uh, when when it is hard for a streaming algorithm when we require uh, when it is need to it, it just needs to be correct on, on average case over the uniform distribution. 
Next, I want to mention some of the related work on majority and what is known. So uh, th there's a paper or and even a paper before that shows that one-sided two-player one -sided two -player communication complexity for the greater than function is omega log n pitch when both Alice and Bob uh, has inputs which are log n bits. Through reduction, this, this actually gives a hard distribution for majority. That is, it, sh it, it shows, it, sh it gives a distribution that shows that uh, for, for which any streaming algorithm that outputs correctly with high probability over that hard distribution uh, requires log n space. But we want the hard distribution to be uniform distribution. Uh, uh, all I want to say in the, on this slide is that two-player communication complexity tools would not be useful for proving lower bounds against uniform distribution because there is a constant, uh, constant uh, communication protocol uh, for solving majority over uh, over uniform distribution, so Alice contains n n input n by two input bits and Bob contains n by two input bits, and in the end, uh, Bob wants to, Bob needs to output the majority of all the bits. So what Alice can do is it just sends a constant c such that her input is is within plus minus epsilon of c square root n. Uh, the, and and this would be the case with high probability over the uniform distribution and thus you you use it, there's a two, there's a constant uh, communication protocol for solving majority over the uniform distribution and we wouldn't be able to prove uh, omega log n space lower bounds using two player communication complexity so uh, what we prove is as follows we actually prove uh, that uh, the majority is still hard on uniform distribution. We say that uh, let x1 to xn be a stream of uniformly, identically and independently drawn random bits. Uh, and then we show that any one pass streaming algorithm which outputs the majority bit with at least 0 0.999 uh, probability over the input distribution, which is the uniform distribution, requires omega log n space. To prove our result, we considered an n-party communication uh, model uh, defined as follows. So pi, the ith party, receives the ith input bit. Communication is only allowed from the ith party to the i, I plus 1 party. Uh, and w w and we cons only consider communication protocols uh, that are one shot. That is, uh, the first party sends a message to the second party. The second party then sends the message to the third party and so on. And the last party, which is the PN, needs to output the majority bit. So it is easy to see that any streaming algorithm M can be simulated by such an n-party communication protocol. PI just sends the uh, PPI just sends the memory state MI after reading I in bits as the ith message to uh, PI plus one. Note that knowing getting the message MI minus one from PI minus one. And knowing, and knowing the ith input bit, it is able to compute the message mi and thus it is a communication, it is a valid communication protocol. Next, we define a new notion of information cost for such n-party communication protocols uh, and uh, such a notion is appropriate for proving strong lower bounds for uh, streaming algorithms. Before that, I want to uh, uh, go through the notation of mutual information where I a, I a colon B given C represents the mutual information between A and B, uh, random variables A and B conditioned on the variable C. So the new notion of information cost uh, for n-party one-way communication protocol, uh, protocols M uh, is defined as follows. We, we will, for the rest of the talk, we will interchangeably use M to represent uh, the n-party one-way communication protocol uh, or the streaming algorithm. So the 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 information cost is the sum over for sum sum of over i equal to one to n and j from one to i. The mutual information between m i and x j condition m j minus one. Here mi is the memory state after reading i input bits, xj is the jth input and mj minus 1 is the memory state just before reading the jth input bit which is xj. Uh, 
uh, to define any information cost we need to define uh, the this, uh, to define the distributions over which this mutual informations are defined so here x is drawn from uniform distribution over minus 1 comma 1 to n and mi is the random variable denoting the uh, uh, memory state at the ith time step uh, and is dictated by the randomness used by the streaming algorithm and the unif and the input distribution so to give a bit of more intuition for the for our for the new notion of information cost uh, let's look at other what could be other definitions of information cost a more intuitive definition of information cost would be as follows where you j we where you sum over the time steps and look at the mutual information between the memory state and the input input string until that time step that is how much information does this memory state mi has about the input uh, till the ith time step um, we observe that this mu this way of defining mutual uh, information cost is uh, is less than equal to the information cost that we defined on the last page uh, for uh, for when x is drawn from a uniform distribution and for streaming algorithms that only use private randomness uh, so this means that uh, it is possible that uh, that the the information cost that we defined on the previous page will give us stronger lower bounds for uh, uh, memory lower bounds for streaming algorithms and in fact we we prove that there is a separation between the definitions of information cost when the protocol is uh, allowed private randomness that is at each time step uh, the par the ith party can use its uh, private randomness to uh, to to dictate the next message okay so our main theorem is actually a variance information trade off and uh, we prove that for any epsilon there exists a delta such that if the information cost of the streaming algorithm m is less than or equal to delta n log n then the expected variance of the sum uh, of the input bits conditioned on the output of the streaming algorithm is greater than or equal to 1 minus epsilon uh, uh, times n which is almost which is very close to the maximum variance possible so this means that if the information cost cost of the protocol uh, so intuitively this means that if the information cost of the streaming algorithm is uh, small then then this streaming algorithm cannot approximate the count very well okay now we have the information uh, variance trade off and this proves our result regarding uh, regarding majority on uniform distribution requiring uh, omega log n space because we observe that the distribution of the sum of the input bits conditioned on the output of m which computes majority with 0 0.99 advantage has low variance so using the theorem uh, from previous page this implies that the information cost of m should be greater than or equal to delta n log n and then we show that this information cost is in fact less than or equal to n times r where r is the message or the memory size of m and this is true for uh, uh, for uh, for when the input is drawn from uniform distribution and m is a protocol that uh, that possibly uses private randomness so this implies that r needs to be greater than delta log n that is the memory of m memory size of m is greater than or equal to delta log n okay before i delve into the proof of our main theorem which is a variance information trade off i want to mention uh, uh, a few lines on the extensions and the subsequent applications to the data streams uh, we prove almost tight lower bounds for solving multiple randomly interleaved copies of the coin problem as well as for solving the or of multiple copies of a variant of the coin problem then we are able to lift these lower bounds to various streaming problems and as we prove lower bound for uniform distribution in the coin problem we end up with lower bounds for nice distributions uh, of this uh, nice distributions of the streaming problems which are appropriate for proving lower bounds in the bounded deletion model and the random order model 
So I would not go into more details about the problem statements and the lower boundary proof for the extensions of the coin problem, but I do want to mention uh, uh, a few of the new streaming lower bounds that we get in the bounded deletion model and the random order model. So for the L2 point query problem, we show a matching lower bound uh, in, in, uh, in the bounded deletion model and the random order model, whereas such a lower bound was only previously known in the turnstile model. And similarly is true for L2 estimation. We also show an algorithm for L2 point query problem in the insertion only model with randomly ordered uh, updates that takes order that that, that takes almost uh, one by epsilon square uh, plus log n memory, whereas in just in the random order model it would require epsilon square times log n memory. Okay. Next, I would like to say a few lines about the proof. Recall that our main theorem was a variance information trade-off, uh, uh, which, 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 which can be stated as follows. For any epsilon, there exists a delta such that if the information cost of the streaming algorithm m is that less than or equal to delta n log n, uh, which is equivalent to if the uh, if the streaming algorithm has uh, less than or equal to delta log n memory, then the expected variance of the sum conditioned on the output uh, uh, output of the streaming algorithm is greater than or equal to uh, 1 minus epsilon times n. So to prove our theorem, we divide the input into uh, delta uh, into uh, log n scales and prove roughly that the memory state m i needs to remember omega 1 bits for every scale. Uh, this is if the uh, algorithm M estimates the count successfully. So ideally, we would want to say that conditioned on the previous bits, the uh, condition on the previous bits, the, the mutual information bit of X uh, between M i and the i th input bit is omega 1. And then we consider the previous two bits. That is, we want to show that the mutual information between M i and uh, x i minus 1 and x i minus 2 conditioned on x less than i minus 2 is omega 1. And then we consider the previous 4 bits and so on. So we have divided the first uh, i bits into log i, uh, into log i uh, scales and then we want to show that the mutual information be uh, between uh, the memory state m i and each of these scales conditioned on the previous input bits is omega 1. Uh, so we do not prove exactly this, but a variant of this. And uh, to to get an intuitive idea, you should uh, why this or why this should be true. You can convince yourself that th this statement is true for when M I just keeps the count of the first uh, count of the first i bits, or the sum of the first i bits. So by chain rule, this would prove that the mutual information between m i and the uh, input string up, up to i ith step is omega log i. And by summing over uh, i equal to 1 to n, we will get the lower bound on the information cost for the protocol m. Uh, in fact, we prove that some i mutual information of m i with the input string up to i ith step is omega n log n for deterministic algorithms. But for randomized algorithms, this isn't true, and we are not able to prove statement statement like uh, like we defined in the, on the last page. So when m is allowed private randomness, that uh, that is when each at each time step m is allowed to use fresh randomness to dictate the next memory state, then we condition on the uh, we condition on the memory state m i minus one instead of conditioning on the input bits up to the i minus 1 step. That is, we are able to show a variant of uh, a variant of this statement. That is, the mutual information between m i and x i condition on m i minus 1 is omega 1. And then you consider the previous two bits and previous four bits. And while conditioning on the uh, memory state, memory state just before reading those bits. And we prove that all these, uh, the mutual information between m i and all uh, all these log i scales is uh, omega 1. Uh, so this in fact shows that the if you sum over uh, i 
from 1 to n and sum over j from 1 to i the mutual information between m i and uh, x j given m j minus 1 which was the information cost the new notion of information cost that we defined in this uh, talk is omega n log n as long as the as long as m is able to successfully uh, uh, estimate the count uh, this is all i would say about the proof uh, thanks for listening